Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Stacy. And I'm Tom, and we're RV Texas, y'all. You know, a little bit of regular RV maintenance can go a long way to save you time, money, and aggravation as you travel. So today we're gonna share 10 easy maintenance tips that we do on a regular basis to make the, our life easier and the whole experience much more enjoyable. And if you hang around to the end, you'll get our best tip we have. So stick around. Okay, to start off these RV maintenance tips, one of my least favorite, to be honest with you, is changing out the filter, the water filter that many people have in their wet bay or, you know, some don't have one built to the coach, but you have one, you can get one that you attach to your hose for your water coming in. Either way, those need to be replaced. We normally do it twice a year. And what, the reason why it's one of my least favorite is because ours is in a very difficult place. And it's, it's behind the wall in my wet bay. So I went ahead and disconnected it. But we change our filter, oh, about, it, well, one or twice a year. So every six months, we change it out. You've probably, if you've seen one of these handy tools hanging around and wondered what it's for, well, it's so you can tighten it or loosen it from where it's at. So, change this thing out and you're, you know, you'll have a lot better water. Okay, for our second tip, I think it's the most important tip we're gonna give and that's to check your tire pressures. And we have a tire pressure monitoring system, so we actually don't have to use this. We have this as a backup. But before we leave every time, we check the air pressure in every single tire. This one's important, folks. And if you, once you get weighed, which we have a video on that that shows two different ways to get weighed two different ways to get weighed okay yeah that works um because knowing your weight helps you know how much pressure to put in your tires and usually you can go to the manufacturer of the tires go to their website and on their website you'll put in what type of tires you are and you can put the weight the load that you're putting on those tires and it'll tell you how much air should be in those, you know, what pressure should be in those tires. Extremely important, guys, because obviously I know we've all seen RVs on the side of the road with blown tires, you know, and you, you don't want that happening if you can avoid it. So one of the ways to help before you leave on your trip or before you move from the next pl to the next place, like us, when we're going, before we go from place to place, we always check our air pressure now we have an air compressor built into this coach so we just have to start our coach up to start the pressure up and we have enough pressure to be able to fill our tires but like the the rv park we're at here they actually have an air station that you can use um, and many rv parks do so you might want to check that out also where we used to keep our rv the rv storage place had an air station also. So when we had our travel trailer before we had this one or, or our gas A, where we didn't have a compressor on board, we were able to fill up right there, uh, get air right there at the storage place. So that was nice and handy. But you might wanna look into, like if if you don't have some kind of uh, way, like, like you don't have a class A that has a compressor on it or whatever, you might want to look into one of the small compressors and just make sure it can handle the, you know, the pressure that you're going to need to put in your tires. That way, if you ever need to add some air when you're on the road, about ready to head back home or, or about ready to leave on a trip, you don't have to haul it somewhere and then put air in it. You can just add it. Nice little handy thing may save you some time down the road, but yeah check your tire pressure that that's a major major uh 
tip there for not just tip that's just a major thing you should do every time another thing I like to do on my maintenance is for my slides for my electric slides to to uh, grease the tracks but you need to make sure that you have slide out lube and let me tell you why that's important because I know people out there some will put WD-40 and stuff like that on here you're actually hurting it more you're, than you're helping it because WD-40 will attract dust. Dust will get into these tracks and that'll cause it to derail. I mean, that could be a bad thing. So you want to use the right kind of lubricant because it dries right away. You just spray it in the track. Wipe. It'll dry itself and you'll do all the tracks of each slide and then when you pull it in, it'll lubricate the whole thing. And if you do that once a quarter or so, usually you should be okay. Another thing on the outside with your slides is rubber conditioner. Now it comes in a can just like we had for the track, but unfortunately we've run out and we've got some on order coming in, but you just, you spray it on the rubber and wipe it down and it conditions that rubber so it doesn't crack or you know it the gaskets work right and another thing just along with that as you once you get to wherever you're going and you push your slides out one thing you want to look for is go around the outside and you don't want this you see how that gasket is going in well, that's a chance for water intrusion. So I have a little tool here. This was, this is a tool from our Magna Shade that I use that helps me get the gasket out. But you don't tear up the gasket or and don't scratch your coach. So you want to, you know, do something that if you have a ladder and can just do it by hand, that's probably the best way. But you can see, I just do it and I turn my gasket out. And see with turning my gasket out then that'll make a better seal that'll make a better seal I'll even with the little ridge at the top I'll even get on top of my roof and go up there and make that lay flat if you keep doing that and you condition them they tend to work better I need to condition mine see that's why I got some coming so <laughs> okay now another thing that it's seriously important for everybody who has any kind of generator and this could even be people that buy generators at the store for their travel trailers or whatever but these generators can gunk up pretty quickly and that can be a costly repair so you know at least if you can once a month that's great I would try to do it once a month if you can at least once every six weeks you need to turn on your generator and bring a load on it you know with and in a motorhome that would mean uh like turning it on and then turning the acs on and stuff and let it run for 15 20 minutes so it heats up and the oil and everything goes through the system that way it'll keep it from gunking up believe me i know a lot of people that have spent a lot of money repairing their generators on multiple multiple times same people multiple times so just one that can save you a lot of money i'm going to do it from the outside people that have motorhomes don't forget you can do it from the outside on your generator um we have a cummins on in and there's an outside start so i'm going to start it out here Now, what I want to say here is make sure you are disconnected from shore power when you're doing this, or at least the, the box turned off, because you don't want multiple sources coming in at one time. So be disconnected from shore power, start this up, and then I'm going to go inside real quick, turn the ACs on, 
I'm gonna let this go for 15 or 20 minutes and, and then I'm gonna shut her down. Okay, we've got that done. Now I'm set for another month. I'm just gonna shut her down. And so that, I mean, that tip will save you a bunch of money if you have any kind of generator so it doesn't get gunked up. You definitely need to do that. Okay, one more thing on the outside. We always want to keep our batteries, our lead acid batteries full. Don't overfill, but we do this about once every couple months. Um, so here we go. Good old funnel. What you don't want to do is overfill here. Also, I wanted to show you, we have these power pulse um, things that they're connected two batteries into one and it pulses the batteries um, like a hundred times a minute and that keeps the sulfites down and it, it doesn't let them crystallize and so your batteries last a lot longer so that's uh these things are really good we've had them uh we've had them about a year now we got them at the uh, FMCA rally last last uh, summer, and uh, we've had them ever since. And our batteries have been good, so I'm going to continue filling these. Okay, a big tip for inside for anybody with an air conditioner, and I know that's a lot of people, most folks. You've got to clean your air return vents. Now, think about in your house, your air conditioning in your house has a return vent area that has a filter in it. And you replace that filter, you know, at least a couple times a year to keep the air conditioning operating efficiently. It's the same thing in your RV, except you typically don't have to replace the filters. You can usually clean them. We do this several times a year. And really I do it based on what it looks like because you can look up into your air return uh, vent and you can see the filter. Um, ours are round and they just snap out. Yours might be square, they might be rectangular and you want to be careful especially the first time you do it because they may just pull down they may twist down they may clip in you don't want to break anything so you want to be careful with this but you can take out your filter and i don't know if the camera picks it up but this has got a little bit of dirt showing on it so all i'm going to do is i'm going to take it over here to the sink and i'm going to rinse it off. It's that simple. And they're little foam filters. Uh, if you haven't done it in, in a while, it's probably going to be full of a bunch of dust. It'll also pick up small insects and webs and things like that. So you just, once I wash them out, I pat them dry and I kind of remove any other debris that looks like it's on there. I'll also take the opportunity to wipe off the vent itself, let it dry really good, and then put it back in. Super simple, um, but it keeps the air conditioning not having to work so hard as it's pulling the air and cycling it through. Another thing I like to do is to clean the gray tank on a regular basis. Now you hear of cleaning the black tank a lot, but a lot of people don't think about the gray tank, and the gray tank can actually come up with just as bad a smells as the black tank, because when you think about it, food particles, uh, stuff from your shower, oily contents can get down in that tank and bacteria can grow. So what we do is before we're gonna take a, a road trip of say at least an hour so it gets good time to slosh around 
and we need to be going somewhere where we have access to either full hookups or there's a dump station we can stop at on our way into the next park. But we'll fill the, the gray tank up about halfway and I'll put in a half a cup of dishwashing uh, gel. Not the, like, not the regular dishwashing soap, but the stuff you would use, the gel you would use in an automatic dishwasher. And I'm going to put a half a cup in, and I'm going to fill that up with hot water. And what I mean fill up, I mean, again, you want to get the, your tank to about halfway. And as you drive down the road, that hot water with the soap in it is going to slosh around in your gray tank, and it's going to clean your sensors, and it's going to clean off the walls of the tank. So when you get to the next location, you can dump that right away, and you're going to have a squeaky clean gray tank. Your sensors are going to probably be more accurate, and uh, you're going to get rid of any of the smells that are in there. I do this at least once a quarter, sometimes more often. In hot weather, I tend to do it more often because more bacteria tends to grow faster inside the tanks that are always damp. And uh, yeah, it seems to help a lot, uh, not only with the sensors, but also with controlling the odors. Okay, the number one maintenance tip we have for you is also the easiest and the most fun, and that is... Well, the reason why you bought it, use it. <laughs> <laughs> because as, as things sit around, they deteriorate, and we found the more we've used our RV, going full time here, we use it all the time, obviously, the fewer problems we have, fewer mistakes we make. So even if you can only get out in your RV once a month, make that a priority because you're going to have great experiences, but you're also going to get to know your RV better. You're going to remember how things work. And if there are little issues popping up, you're going to notice them in enough time to catch them and do something about it before they become major issues. Yeah. So we hope you've enjoyed this maintenance video. We'd love to hear your thoughts and things that you do to maintain your RV. Leave us a comment. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you'll be along for more fun. Give us a thumbs up. And we will see you on Wednesday. Until then, safe travels. And happy camping. Bye. Bye.